Well, Robin, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and, and I speak to you, of course, in the build-up to the World Series race at Silverstone, which is coming up in a few days, which we're all very excited about. But first of all, got to say congratulations on just a brilliant first year for you in, in 3.5 two races fastest laps podium i mean you're just making it look easy mate well it's never easy i mean uh, the championship competition is really hard uh well beginning of the season official test is we're already in front and i never expected that but the team does a good job and uh, they give me a car that i have a lot of trust in and that's why i'm fast really so it's well it's just just a good car good team i feel comfortable in the team i feel it's my second home nearly so uh, that's why uh, that's why I'm so quick. I think. Let's just. Uh, I mean, obviously the team is doing a good job. That's Fortech and Richard Dutton and the boys, and obviously you're doing a great job as well. But let's just go back to the the first time you ever drove a three point five, and if you can just recall your impressions and what that was like in terms of anything else you'd driven at that point. Oh, I jumped from Formula Renault Tulia to a uh, World Series car, and that time was the old car. We didn't have a new car yet. It was in Barcelona, but uh, well, it's it's a big step forward. You gain like 15 seconds or so in Barcelona, with even with the old car, and I was really impressed. You know, if you, if you jump, it was it's a big step, and the physical side from one day to another, because it was uh, from the last race in Barcelona on Sunday and jumped in on Monday. It's it's you know it's a world of change really, and, and you have to learn so much in so short a time. It's really impressive how you can make such a car. Robin, just on that subject, you mentioned the old car. Uh, obviously, there is a new car in, in World Series this year, and we have DRS and, and, and many other differences. But there is a little bit of a currency in the championship that the drivers that knew the old car very well are now at a disadvantage because the new car is so different and it's taken a while to adapt. Would you, would you Having driven them both, and I know you didn't drive the old car for very long, but would you go along with that? Well, I don't know. I don't really know. I only drove the old car about four or five testing days, really. Then I jumped into the new one. It, it's just faster, you know. I mean, I come from a two-liter car, and a two-wheelsies car is much more different than an old car, or an old wheelsies car, and a new wheelsies car, you know. So yeah. for me, yeah. it, it's, it's for everybody the same, really. It's everybody the same car, so everybody has to live with it. Yeah, I think that's a good point you make. Um, few things I really want to talk to you about uh, and no particular order but I'm really interested to know about the the one-off little run you had in the Formula One Red Bull uh, demonstration day at Moscow and and how you prepared for that and what it was like and and what you thought of everything well first of all I didn't prepare for that I mean I came to the Moscow raceway just to, to drive the World Series car and try to win both races but I'm um, not driving F1 car. It's just uh, a big present for me, and uh, it's all thanks to the team anyway. But well, the car is—it's—it's it's a step, but it's a small step from the two the car to the World Series car. I expected more of it, but anyway, we drove with demo tires from Pirelli. The engine was turned back just to be safe. So I think if you get in the real Formula One car, it should be a bit uh, well hard to drive it. And and how much did you let yourself have fun in that car in terms of donuts and what you were doing? Well, I wasn't allowed to do any donuts, so that was quite well. I wasn't happy with it, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, um, I need my energy for the World Series race because I did the demo between the qualifier and the first race, so I only had four laps on Saturday, and on Sunday I did about ten laps or so. I mean, on Saturday I took it easy. Not destroy the car, really, because that will, will be uh, not good for my career anyway. <laughs> but on Sunday, I just you know just see where where the limit was a bit of the car, and uh, just keep saving and bring it home, really. So I had a lot of fun about those two ten laps I did. Robin, um, it looks as if you've just been successful in everything you've ever done in motorsport, and that your CV looks amazing uh, from karting through to Formula BMW and then obviously winning Renault Euro Cup last year. It, and it's happened so quickly as well. I mean, look, talking to you now, here we are, Renault World Series 3.5, Silverstone approaching. Do the karting days seem a long, long time ago now? 
Yeah, yeah. I always go back to the, to the karting team I drove for. I mean, I've been with the same team for 10 years long. I start with it and I end up with it. Which was Beryl, right? Yeah, Beryl GKS was it. And, well, you know, in those 10 years, never, it's never going always good, you know? I mean, I had a year in 2007 where everything's going back and you have to work with the team and if, if you have to trust in the team to go back up again, then, you know, it makes yourself stronger and you can learn from your own mistakes. I mean, I did so many mistakes in carpet days, I still do. And you learn from that. But in 2008, you're coming back again and I was third in the European Championship. And I, well, I could have won the World Cup if uh, my spark would get involved. But, you know, you know that's motorsport, that's, that's just life. And when I jumped into Formula BMW in 2008 and 2009, you, you miss carting a bit because the overtaking is so much easier than, than the Formula cars. And, you know, you lose downforce and you can't yeah. you can drive so so small to each other. And it's, it's different. You have to learn a lot. But still, you know, if you are single-seaters, you know everything about that car. You're not thinking about the carting again. So I'm not know what's going on in the karting world now. And, of course, the other thing I guess you miss when you jumped to Formula BMW is just not driving as much as well. Yeah, it's it's it was not easy. I mean, I, I never drove that much in karting anyway because uh, I didn't have so much money to drive every day. And I was also in school and stuff. So, you know, my dad always told me if you go bad in school, you have to stop karting. So, uh, well, <laughs> I learned a lot in the, my my school days, but um, well, it's you have, to, you have to live with it. It's for everybody the same, so mm. it's mm. not nobody has a disadvantage or advantage on anybody. Robin, tell me about being Dutch and uh, and how if whether that's a help these days. Do you think is it, what's the economy like? What's it? Where do you live? And how did you become interested in motorsport anyway? Because Holland's Formula One presence has not been great in the last 20 years or so with the loss of Zandvoort from the calendar. And, of course, not many Dutch drivers over the years either. No, it's, it's true, you know. But um, if you see Germany, they got about six or seven Formula One drivers now on the start grid, which is well, a lot. But uh, the last big name of Formula One is for, was for Stappen. Mm. And... I still think he was really good, even if he, did, he, he was next to Schumacher. But still, what he did in the Minardi and the Benetton was sometimes was amazing. Mm. But uh, well, I just do my best and let's see where I where I end up. But uh, the economy, you know, if I was from China or whatsoever, I got a big market behind me. But I don't, so yeah. I have to I have to get from my own town to get a Formula One and. It's, it makes life harder, but, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, but, and as you say, you've been through some tough moments. And now that you're with a great team and you're doing a brilliant job in this very competitive championship, all that is starting to pay off and you're able to dig deep and, and pull a lot out of the bag. And, and I'm sure now that you are enjoying life more than ever before, I would guess. Well, I will, I will enjoy life if I won the championship. That's <laughs> I'm just a keep, true racer. Yeah, I just keep working. You know, a championship is never over till it's over. But, uh, well, I'm leading the championship now. Mm. But everything can happen, you know. Uh, we had some bad luck at the beginning of the season. So uh, we did some mistakes, added some mistakes, and you learn from that, you know. Mm. If, you, if you're if on a team, you or, or you win with the team or you lose with the team. Mm. So you're driving for Richard Dutton he's a really interesting guy I think he's uh, had lunch with him the other day very low key but what a job he does and I just can't believe how many cars he's he's running this year and indeed he's racing himself as well uh, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Richard well I know Richard from the former BMW years and, uh, my biggest rival then was Jack Harvey in the second year and a big fight with him well, well he's He's a bit funny in a way, but, you know, he's, he's really on the point, you know. He says yeah. what, he, what, he, what he wants to say, and I, I like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the Dutch themselves are a bit like that, aren't they? You, you you tend to say what you, I'm sure you do, but the Dutch in general also say what's on their mind. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I always go to the point, you know. I have my own uh, meaning on everything, 
and uh, Dublin is the same. So, uh, well, I like those guys. How would you describe your style of driving, Robin? It's well, I see myself as as a fair guy at the track, but I'm not an easy one, you know. Mm. Um, I had some some fight with with a lot of people, and. Um, you know, I, I like to like to race. I like to battle with with somebody else, and I like to to you know to how you say to uh, to well to overtake the guy in front of me, mm. which is fun for me to do, even if it doesn't succeed. You know, but but it's well, I make life hard for everybody who's around me, but that's for everybody the same. I hope. Well, you've done a very good job in championships until now, and I'm sure you'll do a great job the rest of this year. But how do you how do you feel under pressure? How do you think you drive under pressure when the championship really is starting to look realistic? Well, the pressure is not it's not you know a big issue for me. I mean, uh, I live I live on pressure. You know, I put some so many pressure on myself, so that doesn't really matter. But I always say if you if you always finish in top five or even a top seven in each race, you are a championship well or candidate or whatsoever. Mm. And all well, didn't work out in this year because I uh, I had a DNF in Monaco, which wasn't my fault, but you know, that that's motor sport as well. But yeah. uh, you know, we have I just put so many pressure on myself so I just really focus on what I'm doing. And do you even think about 2013 and what the possibilities might be for that at this point? No, uh, not really, because if you think so so much ahead, you make yourself crazy a bit, you know? Yeah. Because you're driving each weekend and you think from, oh, if I crash now, it's, it's, a, bad, it's a bad name for me now. And you have to see, see the, the championship race by race and, you know, everything starts again. Oh, Rob, I mean, everything you're doing is so impressive and, and it's great for you that you've had that slight taste now with Red Bull too. I th- I'm sure that won't go away from Red Bull's perspective and all I can say is very best of luck for the rest of the year and I'm sure the British fans are going to enjoy watching you at Silverstone, a circuit you know really well and you've done a lot of winning there already. Yeah, I won there two times last year and well, even though we didn't have the father's car but uh, just had two good starts and and Lynn was behind me all race, and he put me so much pressure on me, but I didn't make any mistakes. So, you know, since it's the same as, as the pressure what you just said, I can live with it. I get the feeling that Silverstone's going to be a very nice circuit for the World Series car as well. Yeah, with Magus and Beckett's, you know, I, I like fast corners. And even the World Series, each corner is quite fast now, so that's why I enjoy it a lot. Mm. Well, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. Very much so, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much for joining us, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.